Hello, and welcome to Greet the Week. I am Mona Duncan, and I'm here with my co-host, Jan Moray, and a few other friends that have joined us live. That's always nice, and we appreciate you being here. And uh, those of you that are watching later, we appreciate that also. So uh, Jan chose our topic for today, and she entitled it Intention Versus Perception. And uh, I don't know if you've listened to me very much, you know, that I kind of turn things in and out and upside down and every which way to look at them. And Jan did too on this one, and I love it. <laughs> and so she asked the question, when a person does something, is it reasonable to respond based on the emotion that came up in you? Or, uh, of course, you know that those emotions that came up in you are predicated on what you were thinking, on your thoughts. But what if your thoughts completely missed the mark as to the intent of the other person? So you're not responding. And so she asked the question that is it reasonable for the other person's intent to what have not been understood, to have been understood in a wrong way? Just uh, looking at the intent versus the perception. So Jan, take us away. Right, right. Yes, I've, I've just been thinking quite a bit about this this lately, um, where uh, you know you'll say something and then somebody, and you know, I mean, and you'll you'll miss it. You'll miss exactly what the other intent is, or you're really c concerned about which words that you're going to choose because you're trying not to offend people, but you don't really know all the conversations that that are going on. In fact, I think there was even something with. Um, uh, Amy Coney Barrett, when she was, you know, during the proceedings to, to, for her to be on the Supreme Court, where she used some term, I think it had to do with um, uh, sexual preference, and that term was, I think it was sexual preference, that term wasn't used anymore, and, and, um, and, and I'm like, well, how do you, how do you know, how do you know what to say, and then when you put on the spot, it's very easy for you to fall back into the things that you always said, and not realizing that that's not in vogue anymore. But, but I'm going to turn this to an example that is uh, hopefully non-controversial uh, so, so that we can talk about, you know, intent versus um, perception. And, and I remember years ago, back when I was a, a, a young woman just starting out in the uh, working uh, world, that, um, and I was, a, I was a professional, I had an engineering degree. And so I remember one of the other females I was working with said, Said, okay, Jan, you because we I would call I say, well, the girls over there they did this, or the girls, you know, I'm we're going out with the girls or something. Is it no, 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 you don't say girls, we're women, and and you, you say, you know, the, the, the women are, are doing this, and that was so hard for me to get used to because I was in my 20s and I really didn't consider myself a woman. <laughs> I, I, I at the time I felt more comfortable you know, talking about myself being, being a girl and one of the girls. But, you know, fast forward 40 years later and, and that, that woman concept fits me better now. <laughs> but, um, but, but then I hear, I hear people talk about, well, you know, the, you know, this girl at the office said this and, and I just cringe. <laughs> and so should I get upset at the person for saying the girl at the office and tell her, no, 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 you're not supposed to, you know, that's disrespectful to call them girl, you need to call them 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 women. And and you, even if, if people say, uh, you know, you know, referring to a group of women and, and saying, okay, ladies, what do you want to do? That word ladies makes my skin crawl. <laughs> and so, you know, is that is that um, worth it to to say to say something and to get upset at the person because they use the term that you don't prefer to be called? or to understand where they're coming from and understand what their intent is, that that's just the term that they've used and it's not meant in a derogatory fashion, but um, that, that's just the way I, my thoughts have become that, that I look at it as that's not the way you refer to a group of young, young females. So. Yeah, well, thanks for sharing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I thought that was someplace to, to start the conversation because, you know, whether you call somebody a, a girl or a lady or, or, or a woman, I, I think most people have a different definition 
explore what that what that word is. And it's not necessarily meant in a derogatory fashion. In fact, you know, w- once you get older in age and you see all these these young women around, it's uh, I mean, you think of them as, as girls, but in, in a way, it's like well, they're they're young girls, but but they're but they're professional, and so they should be offered respect. And so we can call them young women or um, or, or use the word, but but sometimes it gets it gets hard because you're really not sure if the receiver of that com- of that uh, salutation, how they're going to take it, if that's what the, how they want to be um, referred to. So how are you now with receiving ma'am? Ma'am? Oh, that, that one was a hard one too. <laughs> I remember the first time <laughs> somebody said, yes, ma'am, to me, I was fairly young. I was in my 20s again. I was like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and, and, and my, uh, uh, I have a family member who was in the military and she ref- she's about the same age as I am. And she refers to me as ma'am, and that that just like, ugh. but but for her, it's a, it's a ter- term of respect, even though I grew up in Texas, and I you know, and ma'am was very common where I grew up. A lot of people called older women, you know, p- women who were older than they were, ma'am said yes, ma'am, yes, sir, but my family never never did that. Um, you know, hear, hearing somebody ca- refer to me as yet, you know, so tell me yes, ma'am. That also bothers me, but but I know at least in this particular person, I know it's a term of respect that, that they're being respectful towards you because when you're in the, in the military, that's what you're taught. You know how to respond to the people is to to, to say that yes, ma'am, and, and and yes, sir. And so um, you know even though the the emotion I'm feeling is one of I, I I don't I don't like it. I'm not comfortable with it. I know that it's not meant to be insulting. It's not, it's, it's, it's really a form of, of respect. So, so, you know, I think it's like, I mean, you, you feel those, I mean, we've talked about this, you know, multiple times on, on, you know, these different shows that, um, that you don't always have to follow through with what your emotions are telling you. And so if your emotions are telling you something, it doesn't mean that you have to respond to that emotion. It's, is to sit back and to try to understand the other person and understand where, where they're coming from and what their intent is, where, where you're looking more on the intent of the other person as opposed to um, how, you, how you're receiving it. Yeah, exactly. And one of the things that Amy Barrett said just real frequently in the hearings was the fact that she is going, she is, coming to this position with no agenda. Mm-hmm. And that is certainly something that I always want to have in mind is just to not have an agenda. Right. So whatever right. whatever what anyone is saying, whatever they call me, whatever they don't call me. And I always want to, you know, just this deep inner being to always respond with kindness. Mm-hmm. Whether because words are so powerful and they have so many variances and so many absolutely and it's you know the tone you say it or the tone that's i just want to i want to be tone deaf (laughs) and i always want to go for what is the kindest the response to that and certainly not correcting someone's grammar or their verbiage is and then you know responding in a just smile if nothing else yeah well, I mean, I think it's given the person the benefit of the doubt to, to believe that they really are just, they're, they're really not trying to be hurtful or demeaning in, in what they're saying. And like, like with that person who, you know, would say, yes, ma'am, to me, you know, I, I told her, I said, I said, you know, I really understand where you're coming from that you say yes, ma'am, all the time, but it, it is uncomfortable for me to hear you say that to me. I mean, you know, trying try to just let her know that that it's not, that I do feel that way, but not to be angry at her for saying it. Or, and if she continues to say it, to say, well, that's okay, I've already told her, I let her know, you know, how, how I, I provided the information. And, um, and, but it is hard to change somebody's um, patterns of speech, you know, when they're, when they're used to saying that, oh, then they think, uh-oh, when I'm around Jan, I can't say that, I've got to say something else. And then when I'm around Mona, I have to say something else. And when I'm around, Jerry, I have to say something else. And 
it's it's confusing <laughs> to remember all this stuff. And so if we can just give people a little slack and and just understand that they're coming from a different place than we are, and that's okay. So are you talking to yourself as much as to all of us? Well, absolutely. <laughs> 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 we can uh, all learn from each other, right? <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. There is a uh, article in uh, yesterday's Dallas paper that was on, and they have it on the front page. Poor guy. Anyway, it's a it, and I don't even know the whole story. I just I'm probably telling you more than I know because I didn't read the whole article exact. But what it was was. It was on the evening news or something, and one guy with the weather and one guy with the sports was, was bantering back with each other. And then the guy that was with the sports made a comment, and he made the in, in the paper, he said, often he is saying things that he tries to be funny, even though he doesn't personally believe it. Well, anyway, it got him in big trouble with a lot oh, of people. I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> because he said a banter back to the weather guy that was uh, in keeping with what he had said about the weather, but was not in keeping about people in, in general. <laughs> and he said, uh, you know, he said what he thought was funny. And he was confessing the fact that he apologized to the whole world for that. And that he even said things he didn't believe. And whenever we can begin to monitor ourselves, when we can begin to, because, because we're punched, to not automatically spit something out, and to look at the situation and to give grace. I mean, that's all there is to it, is just giving a little grace, yeah. a yeah. little space for the other person. It's just kind of like if someone mispronounces a word, you don't automatically come in and say, no, it's not that, it's something else. You just kind of in conversation, maybe say the word back to them in a way that is pronounced correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want to continue to say it the way they said it just because they said it that way. Right, right. I think I mean, of, of you one... do it graciously. And if they take it, fine. Yeah. If they don't, maybe later. Yeah, yeah. Um, you talking about the guy saying the thing in, in jest, making a joke. You know, we off we can't get ourselves into pretty much trouble telling jokes because because you'll say something that that was meant in jest, and it doesn't may not come out right to to the other person, and and then you know somebody will say, well, I was just joking. Can't you take a can't you take a joke? And and it's like, well, again you know, understand their, their intent. Okay. They were trying to be funny, but just let them know that wasn't funny, but don't hold it against them. Um, yeah. 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 Just speak it, but let it go. Right. Right. Yeah. Cause they'll, they'll remember it. <laughs> you know, you don't, have, you don't have to fuss at them. Just uh, let them, let them know that you didn't uh, appreciate that. And, Right, right. Those misunderstandings and so forth. Well, as, as I was reading over this little uh, blurb that you had put out, what we were going to talk about today, I was thinking, well, where's she going with that? And yeah. was hoping you had several uh, examples examples in, in line. And I got to think, well, you know, do I have an example? And I remember one time, uh, not too terribly long ago, actually, and again, back to intent versus perception, because our perception it's the way we see something and to us it becomes reality. So anyway, it was late in the evening and it was, uh, I didn't have anything at home to fix quickly. And so I stopped by a um, gas station that had good chicken there that you could pick up it for little or nothing. Plus we needed bread. I'll go downstairs. I said, I'll go downstairs. So as I, Pulled into the gas station. I didn't even realize that pulling up right beside me was my husband. Oh, and, uh, and I thought, oh, well, maybe he's getting us something to eat for tonight. Or maybe he's getting bread or whatever. So anyway, I got out of the car and he got out of the car and uh, we were both headed in. And, and he said, uh, are you coming to get something? <laughs> and I said, yeah, are you? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, since you're going in, why don't you just go ahead and give us some bread? And anyway, that something, I'm going after something, you're going after something. 
uh, I don't know, it was just kind of that. Don't you know what my something is? You know, kind of like a mind reader there. So, are you there? You were, you were expecting him to, to, to have the same something in mind as you had in mind? <laughs> Apparently I did. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds it like you work that way. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, you know, we went home and had sandwiches because at least we had bread. We had bread. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you had something to put in between the slices of bread. Well, right, right, right. right. <laughs> I had a few things there. So uh, it's looking at. And so did you feel um, upset because he didn't go, he, he didn't pick up what you wanted? His something was not the same as your something? No, I don't, I wasn't upset. It was just, I guess it was uh, going back to getting information completely as opposed to just one or a couple of hands. Assuming. <laughs> yeah, instead of assuming that that's, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. But in what you're talking about, I think we're looking at maybe just assuming that they're that they're not being malicious about whatever yes. they're saying. Or, or if they see it as a joke, okay, well, it didn't seem very funny to me. But, uh, right, right, yeah. right. The kind of right. speak up that may help the next time. Yeah. And, and I think it is good to, to speak up and let people know, especially if it is something that can be taken offensively, because some people really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that what they're saying can be taken as, as being offensive and just letting them know in a polite way uh, will, makes them aware of it and and they could become embarrassed about it too it's like you know, how many times have I said this before nobody else has said something um, to, to let me know that this is this is not proper this is not will not be very well received by somebody else yeah, and it's looking at how what we say and when we think we are on the right track or saying the right thing, it can be so confusing. There's one political ad that's just run real frequently, and they're asking you to vote no for so-and-so, and they're giving you all these reasons for it. But that's not my point. My point here is you can't vote no. No, you can't it's not vote, but you can't vote no. Unless it's a proposition, then you either vote yes or no, right? But yeah, not for no, a person. it's not a proposition. It's for the person to be elected, you know, to be put into a particular yeah. office in the in the state. And I'm thinking that has to be confusing to yeah. I mean, plus, you know, we've talked about the law of attraction here before. And when you talk when you're when you believe in the law of attraction, when you tell somebody not to vote for somebody, you're actually putting the emphasis on that person. And so you're actually, because people don't register, the no really doesn't register. You're, you're giving credit to this person's name. So this person's name is now becoming the thing that the person remembers when they watch the ad. And they probably don't remember who was the person who sent the ad, you know, who paid for the ad. And, and so you have to be real, real careful with that, the, the negative concept yeah that's just yeah. like all the ads that are on tv to start with <laughs> you know they're trying to get into the psychic to think of to think of that brand whatever that brand may be whenever you go to because you you need you need new wheels or something to go with that particular brand or the, the food you're at but you go after that brand yeah. and so yeah it's kind of like telling the child not to do something mm -hmm. they don't hear the not all they hear yeah. is the do well, well, that they're more intent on doing it because you told them not to. <laughs> so you put, you reinforce that idea in, in their mind to, to do something. All right. But going back to your candidate, if you don't have anything good to say about what you can offer yourself as being in that position, you know, I'm sure, sure there's a lot more positive things you could say about what you could do for the position than just doing a negative ad on the, on the other person. So. Exactly, exactly. On the evening news the other night, there was a political uh, 
advertisement that they gladly showed. And I don't remember what state it was, but it was two people running for a very high position. And they each spoke of their benefits. They were standing like six feet apart. And they each spoke of their benefits that they would bring to that particular state. And then they looked at each other and then they looked at the cameras and they said, we approve this message. Oh, no matter who you vote for, you know, and wow, I said, that's man, I applauded that. And the fact that really? they put it on the evening news, you know, that's to, oh, I'd like to see it more being of a that. nice thing to do and something that that, that all of us right. would be better off if we emulated. Right. Well, because pe people are all very different and we all have different values and different things that are important to us. And so so somebody who, who whose values don't aren't don't coincide with ones that you have it's going to be hard for them to want to vote for you but does it make you a bad person it just means that, that you're not offering something for them and so no I think I think that's a great example to say you know we we offer two different perspectives and if you if what I say is something that resonates with you vote for me if what my opponent says, is something that resonates with you, vote, vote for the opponent. Um, because I, I'm going for office because there are certain things that I believe in and that's what I'm gonna push forward. And if I have enough people who support me, then that's the way we're gonna go. But if uh, have, there's too many people who don't support me, well, maybe I'll change my thinking, maybe I won't. <laughs> but, but we are we'll next year. <laughs> we're in next year. <laughs> Kind of what the bears say a lot. Wait till next year, and the cowboys wait till next year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you always get another chance, and um, yeah. And so we do too. And so if we have been offended by something, we can begin to look at the fact that I choose to not be offended, and to give the other person the benefit of the doubt that maybe they were maybe they were being snarky. But I want to get to the point that I don't even recognize snark. Right. Right. And it goes back to, as you said, it's looking at the intent versus the way we are perceiving something. Right. And as we perceive it differently, we can kind of change just what we thought the intent was also. And there's nothing wrong with asking the person, what was your intent? <laughs> you know, what, what did you mean by that? <laughs> I, I remember one time uh, there was a, a guy in our a man and he was you know, in a fairly high position and he, he was retiring and he, he, he hadn't spoken 10 words to me. You know, he, my office was on one end of the hall, his was on the other end of the hall, but we never, we, other than saying hello, when we pass each other, we never really had a conversation. And when he retired, he left me a message saying that, you know, I know we didn't really get to know each other, but I think maybe we could go out to lunch for something, you know, after I retire. And, and I'm listening to this message and I'm going, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so I call him back. I uh, and I said, <laughs> I said I got your message, and I'm I'm really not comfortable with what you had to say in that message. That you wanted to go to lunch and stuff. And then then I got a message back from him saying, Well, after you repeated back what I said to you, I can kind of understand why you were a bit offended. So so never mind. <laughs> but it was just it was just kind 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 of weird the way that whole thing. Thing happened is uh, because because it, it really doesn't hurt to to go back and and ask them to clarify <laughs> what was their intent um, about what the, what they had said. So. Can you give me more information? Yeah, right. <laughs> so, what the meaning was? Yeah, I know. I'm so. What do you mean by lunch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kind of like when I was in uh, traveling in, in Europe after I graduated from college, my roommate and I went to Europe for two months on a URL pass and backpacks, you know, all over, all over the place. And, and you saw, you know, everywhere the, the guys would say, "Oh, let's go for coffee," and we're like, "No, no, 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 no." That that was the no. You never accept the offer for coffee. And, and <clears throat> on my way back after my trip was over, um, I, I ended up traveling alone on the on the way back. And so I was in in Paris, and this guy. Uh, saw my bag had an American Airlines tag on it and he's like oh you're from the United States I said yeah and he started talking I said, oh are you changing you know 
trains in this station. And I said, I said, yeah. And he said, oh, well, how about if we stop for coffee? And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I got to go. And he says, oh, no, no, no. I don't mean that. I mean, really having a cup of coffee. <laughs> and so that one just kind of <laughs> solidified in me what everyone had warned me about the let's go for coffee uh, meant. But it's, um, uh, but yeah, you, you don't know what the intent is. And unless you ask the person specifically, because uh, because it may it it may be you know very honorable and uh, you know they they you know really just wanted to learn a little bit more about you, and um, so so you don't know unless you ask, and you may miss out on something. And what? And you may miss out on something. You know if you if you don't ask to clarify you. May, may miss out on um, you know, having a, a good friend or, or somebody you can talk to. Right, 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 right. So it's looking at our own intent as well as our own perception. Is that what, what we're winding up to say? Right, right. And, and there's no right or wrong. Um, I mean, just because I'm looking at it one way doesn't mean that that's the, the, the right way. That's the correct way. Um, I'm, I don't want to assume <laughs> what, what you're thinking. Let's, um, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and uh, let's, let's discuss it. So there's no right or wrong as such, but there is a nicer and not nice. Right. <laughs> as to how we receive those things how to and how we it. give them. Yeah. Yeah. So have your intention to be honorable? Yeah. Ha and we'll give them the benefit to yeah. assume that they're honorable unless they prove that they're, that they're not, instead of just being insulted at the, at the beginning, um, is to, to try to find out what's going on. And even if you do have a difference of opinion, you might be able to find some common ground somewhere and begin to old enough to speak it up no coffee <laughs> right <laughs> yeah so so just something to to, to think about it um, and, and you know again going back to the emotion thing you can feel some i mean this is such an emotional time right now especially what all we're, we're having to to endure that our <clears throat> our mental health is probably we're a little on the edge <laughs> And so, so a lot more emotion can come up for us. And I guess it's just um, to remind everybody that we don't have to act on that emotion. And um, let's just give some, somebody the benefit of the doubt, be, be kind, try to understand each other because we do need to have people in our lives and we do need to have controversy. We do need to have different points of, of view. That's what makes life interesting, but it doesn't make uh, doesn't mean you have to avoid that other person. Okay. Well, thanks for a good topic and words of wisdom. All right. And uh, see everyone next week.